What's up guys, Gator with Self Taught Dev. Today we are doing another LinkedIn assessment for you. We're gonna try the C Sharp assessment. I'm probably gonna fail because I've never used C Sharp before in my life. I know, I think void is a thing. That's about the limit of my knowledge and that's probably wrong. So probably gonna fail this. This is for educational purposes only, but you guys have been asking for it. So finally gonna get it done. Let's see what happens. All right, so when would you use a dictionary rather than, than an ah, when would you use a dictionary rather than an array type in your application? When you need to store values of the same type, when you need a jagged collection structure, when you need a to store key value pairs rather than single single values, I'm getting tongue tied, Jesus. When you need an ordered or searchable list. Well, the dictionaries generally aren't ordered so that's not it. I'm, I think it's this one um, because in dictionaries, you have a key value pair and arrays, you just have single values. So we're gonna go with that. All right, which statement is true of delegates? Uh, delegates are not supported in the current version of C-sharp. That doesn't sound like that'd be the right answer at all. Other variables can be passed to delegates as parameters, possibly. They can be chained together. They cannot be used as callbacks. So let's see. C sharp, what are delegates? Uh, delegate is a type of rep, is a type that represents references to methods with a particular parameter, list and return type. Um, when you instantiate a delegate, you can associate, what does it look like? I just need to see a code snippet of it. We have 44 seconds. Uh, that's not what I want. Uh, let's see, delegate public. So those are parameters, so you can pass parameters to it. Only variables, would that make sense in a programming language? Sounds interesting. Public delegate void string s. Mm, so that's the type and then that's the variable, right? Uh, 18 seconds, we're probably just gonna have to guess on this. I uh, know it's not this one. I don't think it's this one, but we're gonna go with they can be chained together. Sure, we'll go with that. All right, next one. How could you retrieve information from a class as well as create an instance at runtime? Serialization, doesn't sound right. That's something you do to form data, right? Abstraction, reflection, dependency injection. All right, Google, what do we, what's the answer here? How can, how could you receive information about a class as well as create an instance at runtime? I feel like abstraction is the correct answer for this. C sharp, how to create, are we creating a class? Oh, retrieve, receive information about a class as well as instantiate it. I'm gonna learn C sharp eventually, I promise. Right now I'm focused on TypeScript. Um, instantiating a class so far, is this .NET? I need C sharp, okay, cool. So we're in C sharp. Actually, let's try something else. C sharp, what is abstraction? We have like 30 seconds left, so we gotta make this quick. Da data abstraction is the process of hiding certain details and showing only essential information to the user. It can be achieved by either classes or interfaces. Ah, that's feeling less right now. I might go with reflection because you reflect the information and you create an instance. So you're reflecting an instance of the class. Boom, correct answer. All right. All right, what kind of values can arrays store? Multiple variables or collections of the same type, unordered collections of numerical values. Generally in most programming languages, arrays are ordered. I don't know why that would be different in C-sharp. Key value pairs of any C-sharp. Okay, arrays generally don't hold key value pairs. That's usually dictionaries, classes, and struct instances. I'm gonna go with multiple var variables or collections of the same type. Actually, no. If that said multiple values, I'd feel like that's right. But because I feel like arrays can store all sorts of values. Let's see here. C sharp, what can arrays store? Arrays are used to store multiple values. See, that's, what I, that's the phrase I was looking for. Multiple values in a single variable. Instead of declaring separate, to declare an array, Define the variable type uh, with square brackets. I know how to declare an array, but which one of these is the right answer? Okay, so we know it's not B or C. Class and struct instances, um, those aren't the only things it can store, but it can store those. I'm gonna see. 
Can it store glasses? Yeah, we're gonna go with D. All right, next answer. Our next question. What character would you use to start a regular expression pattern with a word boundary? Um, what is a word boundary? How do we, what do we, do we just search for a word boundary? Oh, that'll work. Oh my gosh, I took pre-workout like 15 minutes ago. My skin's all tingly and itchy because there's beta something in my pre-workout and I need to go to the gym now, but we got to finish this first. So regex word boundary expressions. Um, now where's the answer here? Slash B, is slash B an answer? I'm thinking that's the right answer, guys. There is a B, that would make sense because slash B for boundary. So we're just gonna go with that. All right, when an asynchronous method is executed, the code runs, but nothing happens other than the compile, compi then a compiler warning. What is most likely causing the method to not return anything? Uh, the yield keyword is missing from the method. Would yield throw a compiler warning though? The method is missing an await keyword in its body. The return yield statement is missing at the end of the method. The wait keyword is missing at the end of the method. So it's it's either we're missing yield or we're missing a wait, right? Something like that. Um, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe. All right, if you know the right answer to this question, I want you to stick it in the comments right now, and then I can go back and see the answer and I'll know what it was for the future, but for now, we're gonna go with C, final answer. And we win the million dollars, congratulations guys. How would you determine if a class has a particular attribute? Type of method that should be decorated with some attribute, maybe. Attribute dot get custom attribute dot of, um, wait, so we're trying to determine if a class has a particular attribute. Why would we need the type of and why would we use dot, why would we use attribute dot get custom? See type of to me should return, like if it's an int, a string, or what type of data it is. But we're gonna go with D. All right, why would you use a class field in C sharp to define behaviors inside of a class? To store a cla the class definition value. What is the difference between throwing exceptions and throwing clauses? Ooh, what is that? Let's see. C sharp, what is a clause? That's what it was, right? Yeah. The where clause is used in a query expression to specify which elements from the data source will be returned in the query expression. So it's like an if statement, I guess. Throw exceptions overwrite, throw exceptions overwrite the stack trace while throw clauses retain. Um, so I guess I'm not understanding what a clause is because if you're throwing an if statement, that wouldn't make sense. So it can't be that. Um, a query expression must begin with a from clause. The where clause is used, ah, I don't know enough to get this one right. So we're gonna go with C and just let you guys know what these are. Um, throw exceptions, okay, we read that one already. Throw clauses fire only at runtime while throw exceptions can fire at any time. Throw clauses overwrite the stack trace while throw exceptions retain the stack information. Throw exceptions fire only at runtime while throw clauses fire during compilation time. Yeah, we gotta go with C, only three seconds, dang it. All right, what is the difference between a ref and out keywords? All right, we're gonna try to use test taking skills to see if we can just get the answer without Googling this. Variables passed to ref can be passed to a function without being initialized while out specifies that the value is a reference value that can be changed inside the calling method. Variables passed to out specify that the parameter is an out parameter, is an output parameter, while ref specifies that the variable may be passed to a function without being initialized. So it's basically which one can be passed without being initialized, I have no idea, so we're gonna go with C. Um, what is this code an example of? This is an example of a multi-threading code. All right, let's see. Private static object, private static object, private static void. Hey, void's a thing. I was right. High five. Boom. All right, lock object A or B. Thread sleep lock object A. Private static void performance test B. Lock object A. Mm. Mm. I don't know if it's multi-threading, is it? 
I guess it is, because you're putting a thread to sleep. Um, thread mismanagement. Yep, this looks like mismanagement. A potential deadlock. Thread sleep. Huh. I don't think that would cause a deadlock or like cause it to stop running. A private class that uses multi-threading, that looks like it'd probably be right. What are C-sharp events? System actions that communicate directly with the compiler at runtime. Actions that execute when the code compiles, generating logs and test output. Actions that generate notifications which are sent to their registered listeners. I think it's that, probably. User-only methods that send data to the application's backend. Hmm. Well, in JavaScript, you have events like add event, like click event listeners, load event listeners. I can't think of any others off the top of my head right now, but there's those. So yeah, we're gonna go with C for this one. Cause when you don't know the answer, go with C. I think statistically C is like the most correct answer if you're guessing, so. How would you write a delegate named result callback with an int parameter name response code? I'm gonna rule out C on this one actually. <laughs> no, we talked about how it's usually the right answer, but this one is the only one that has void first. The other three have delegate first, so I'm gonna go with that. And then it's void after that. So I'm thinking it's either B or D. So what is the difference here? Actually, I think it's this one. Because the only difference now is this last part and this top one uses the curly, I mean, uses the parentheses. And this one uses angled brackets. And if it's a function, we want to use, I'm pretty sure C sharp uses those for passing parameters or arguments. So we're going to go with that one. All right. How would you declare a sealed class named user private sealed class user? I don't know if you is sealed an actual keyword. I would have thought it would be private, but yeah, I'm going to go with this one. In which of these situations are interfaces better than abstract classes? When you need a list of uh, when you need a list of capabilities and data that are classes, agnostic, user, use interface. In which of these situations are interfaces better than abstract classes? Let's see here. I don't think it's B. We're gonna go with C on this again because I have to go to the gym. 70, oh wait, below the 70th percentile. <gasps> Somebody told me that I could see where I, what I got wrong. I don't see anywhere that would let me look at my answers. So there's that, but hope this helped you guys out. Uh, if it did, give me a thumbs up so YouTube knows I'm doing good stuff. If you know the correct answers to the ones that I missed, which I'm sure there are a lot of, leave those in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for videos or anything you wanna see me do, let me know in the comments as well. We've also got a Discord if you wanna come talk tech. It's mostly front-end development right now, but I'm sure there's people that know C-sharp too. And I think that's about it. So I will see you next time, peace. Round one.